So I think what I'm going to do is it's not going to be the top and bottom of each tier. It's going to be like, that's just the tier. Okay. Okay. So this is going to be the SOD 25 PVP tier list for everything PVP, uh, well PVP. BGs, which will be just Warsong and Dueling. Which kind of put in a, a one size fits all. And each tier is just essentially equivalent the order doesn't matter so affliction we're going to start out with a tier i'm going to explain everything afterwards first of all i'm just going to put put things in their tiers we've got arcane in c tier no b tier uh warriors in b tier acid rogue b tier boomy b tier bm uh is b tier as well we got combat in A tier. Yes. Uh, I'm going to put these in. Uh, so if I put it in F tier, it basically just means there's no reason to play this spec. There's nothing that the talents really bring yet because it's too early on. And it's just essentially not a thing. Uh, we've got Destro in S tier with Disc. We've got Ellie is also in B tier. B tier is getting populated quickly, man. Uh, enhanced A tier, Feral A tier, Fire Mage S tier, Frost Mage A tier, uh, Fury Warriors again not a thing. The talents early just don't do anything. Uh, Paladin Holy Pala is A tier. Holy Priest again not a thing. It'll be played out the same as way, same way as Disc, just worse talents. Uh, MM is in A tier. Prop Palette is basically a rep palette, but slightly worse. Uh, Prop Warrior is going in C tier with a Resto Druid. And we're going to have Resto Shaman in... Mm, we'll put him in B tier. Rep Pala is Pompey. A tier. Shadow Priest, not really a thing. It's, it's tough. It's not really a thing almost as much as... Uh, you know what? I'm putting Shadow Priest in C tier. It's basically not a thing, but... I know that some desperate people will try and play it, so I'll put it there. Uh, Sub Rogue is going to be B tier. Potentially A tier. It depends on how much. It's kind of a cheese spec, a cheese one shot spec. Once you get kited, it's over, basically. And then our last is Survival Hunter, which is going to go in S tier. So uh, I'm not going to really answer chat that much right now. We'll talk talk and engage with chat a little bit more once once uh I've, I've kind of gone through every class and why it's there if you disagree with anything i'm absolutely over the moon to hear it and and talk about it but i'm just gonna go through everything first because i'm gonna, gonna chuck this up on youtube so let's whip him out real quick destro lock where is he so destro lock i've put an s tier uh because you can put a pretty nice spec together you also have the option to go improve shadow bolt instead of cataclysm which procs off if you run meta, which you most likely will. You have the option of meta and chaos bot. While PvP, I would say meta slightly better. More structured PvP where you have better positioning and peels from your teammates. Chaos bot might be slightly better. But if it's quite scrappy, then having meta to be more tanky is going to be insane. And what this will allow you to do is you have a, you have instant shadow bolt and you have instant searing pain there, basically. The instant shadow bolts are in melee range. And what you can do with those is you can proc improved shadow bolt. And then you can put up your, your Corruption and Agony and they'll do more damage into the Improved Shadow Bolt, which is obviously free damage. Now, you also have the option to use Incinerate. Uh, and if you don't run Chaos Bolt, you have Incinerate, which is going to be your, your main fire cast spell, right? Now, you can eat kicks with that and then cast Fear. Or you can cast Fear, eat kicks with that and cast Incinerate. Now, you also have this weird leg of fire. And I'm not sure how this is going to work yet. But arguably, if you can... Cast a rain of fire on someone, cancel it before the first tick, and still get this debuff. You can do some insane combos with this, with things like grenade. And this is going to do nuts damage. Especially if you get incinerate up, and then you send a chaos bot. You're pumping. And they're going to take extra fire damage, so your searing pain is actually going to be good now as well. The main downfall of Destro right now is that the searing pain rank is uh, level 16. No, 18, sorry. That's the main downfall of it. But 
this spec you basically have everything you can also switch to lake of fire out for demonic tactics if you want to be more just critting um so there's a couple of things you can switch but yeah you have options for a lot of damage you have options to be really tanky and you have options to rot with the dots so that's why i've put destro in s tier right now it's it's a warlock after all next we've got survival hunter uh, i'm not going to really go through the gear that much i'm just going to look at the specs now twink hunter overall does good damage really good damage and obviously survival is still going to have that range damage they're still going to have the arcane multi uh, and just auto shot in general and then they're going to have ex either explosive shot or chimera chimera has a bit more utility with the disarm explosive has uh just more safety but it's really going to depend on the damage as to which one you go for because this eats your arcane so the reason survival is i think better than mm is because you can deal with melee stuff as well so you're not always going to be having you know that perfect max range stuff going on especially in world pvp things are going to happen you're going to have to adapt and deal with it survival is a lot better at this than mm because you don't have scatter shot yet as mm but survival you, you're going to be having a lot more melee damage with this and this and raptor if data mining stuff is to be believed raptor strike is like a mortal right not in that it puts up a debuff but it's like an instant attack it's not like on next attack like a rook so that's kind of a big deal you got options to use raptor strikes mongoose um and then flanking as well so a lot of melee damage available and then obviously your imp wing clip a bit more damage a bit more defense and then deterrence to avoid some damage but then you also have trap mastery, right? If your traps are usable in combat, which is another data mine thing, so we're not sure whether to believe it or not yet, but we have to just go off what we can. This is going to be very valuable because you're going to be able to trap a lot more. So not having them resist those traps is super valuable. And then obviously longer duration freezing traps as well to allow you to reposition. Uh, the, the master marksman is actually a placeholder right now. This is going to be the lion aspect of the lion, which again is even more HP. So... Survival looking to be very good all round, I would say. Next up, we got Disc. Disc is in S tier because the base uh, healing and damage of their spells is very good. They don't scale that well with bonus healing. Shield has like a 0.1 scaling, something ridiculously low. Uh, Flash heal, obviously, 1.5 over 3.5. And you're not going to be using heal that much in PvP unless you're having good range. Um, in which case it should do, do a decent amount of healing anyway but obviously you've got penance and pom now as well these are both really efficient and doing really large amounts of healing and so out of all the healers disc actually deals with the burst damage the best uh, because you've got good instance you've got good throughput the, the one downside is going to be the mana efficiency and usually holy palace out mana efficiency priests at this level but because the damage overall i think from everyone is going to be higher due to the new runes Palas are going to have to start using more mana intensive spells. They can't just spam Flash of Light. It's going to be a lot closer in terms of mana than uh, it was before. So yeah, base base healing and damage very good. The spec also is really nice in disc. You get really good talents all around. Uh, and then you also have the option to go 5 into Blackout, 5 into Wands, or 5 into Meditation. Uh, sorry, 3 into Meditation, and then either 2 into one of these, depending on how you want to play it. So a little bit of versatility as well. Generally, you don't need healing focus because you've got Penance. So most of your stuff's going to be instant. Penance doesn't get pushed back. So this will just be for flash heal. So you can actually skip those two points if you want. But yeah, also option for Void Plague or Strength of Soul. Both of these very good as well. Because we're not getting that much bonus healing at level 25. The base, the, the, the coefficients being bad doesn't hinder you that much. But the base healing obviously is, is super valuable. I think the, 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 last, the last thing would be that Disc has defensive dispel, which no one else has at this level. Holy Palace get it at 42. Uh, and only Shaman has Purge. So you have Purge as well. So a lot, a lot of your, your kit is very well rounded at 25 as priest. So that's why I've chucked priest in there. Disc priest. So Fire Mage, Spec. Uh, you get the hit for Arcane. You get the hit for Frost uh, and Fire, sorry. And the reason you only put two, uh, you put one point for the 2% is we're expecting to get the, the Epic Boots. These bad boys for that last 1% to get the 3. That's going to cap you. You're not going to be able to cap all 4%. In Classic, there's that last 1% that you can't quite get. It doesn't work. So there's always going to be 1% miss. So right now, but there's a couple actually of fire specs you can go. This one actually doesn't have Imp Fireball, but you can go Imp Fireball as well. That's definitely an option. Uh, this one is more of a Scorch build. So you're going to Scorch. You're basically going to Living Bomb. You're going to Scorch. And you're going to Fire Blast on CD pretty much. Uh, and then you have Ignite, and you have Burnout, 
to give you that extra crit so that you get the nice ignites. Icy veins for more car speed and then living bomb. The other option is potentially going for pyro and improved fireball. I don't have that spec on here right now, but something that I'll be adding. So yeah, fire has very good, uh, very good all round damage. Good ranks of spells in terms of the levels that they learn them at. Good AOE pressure. Um, not that much uh, risk in terms of casting because they have two schools as, as well. They, well, three schools te technically, but you know, if you get kicked on a scorch or something, you can just poly stuff like that. You got Nova, you can move away, you can reposition. You know, you, you still have all that good mage utility. So fires fires up there for me because of that. Now frost is on the next tier. I'm going to do frost next. Uh, and the reason frost is on the next tier down is because frostbolt is actually like shadowed pain, is a level 18 trained uh, ability. You get the next rank at 26. So frost is hurt by that, and it's also hurt by the lack of shatter and ice shards. So your your burst potential is is hurt a lot. At 25, it's going to be really good at 40, but at 25, it gets hurt a lot by missing these. So even though you get some really nice runes, you are not reaching your full potential by any means. So mostly you're going to be like a CC bot, I would say, as Frost. You're going to be slowing people with improved Blizzard, uh, Blizzard sorry. Going for the rank 1 bots. Um, just being annoying. Utility in general, you've got the snap there as well. So I put the Frost Mage in A tier. Next up, we've got Affly Lock. Now, Affly Lock is... The reason that, that I put Affly Lock down a little bit... Um, potentially, you can still run meta as Affly, and that could be good. But the spec is kind of nasty. Doesn't doesn't look that nice. Um, you're going to either have one or two points in suppression, depending on whether you got the boots yet. Then you obviously got the instant corruption. Improved life tap isn't really that needed with meta, but these other two talents aren't that good. Maybe you could go for Curse of Weakness, potentially for melees, but right now this spec is going Imp Life Tap and Imp Drain Life. Assuming you could potentially run either Horn or Chaos Bolt and not have the uh, the meta. But I think meta is going to be very needed for World PvP uh, at 25. Otherwise, you're just going to get, get absolutely insta gibs. I think. Not having Coil, not having insta fear. There's no Shadow Fury or anything like that, so... The Warlock will need to, to ta like tank a little bit before they can sort of self peel or anything like that. I think the points in Imp Drain Life are kind of uh, low value, but Imp Agony and Amplifier Curse are quite nice. Now we got the Master Channeler rune as well, so no Drain Life thing. It's just going to be a dot instead, which is quite good. You get an extra dot, right? You're going to have a few few dots rolling. Then I put Incinerate on the Leg Rune, Everlasting Affliction. I think is kind of weak. And the other two are are okay, but if you're Affliction, you don't really care about the crits from Demonic Grace. It doesn't synergize that well. So the dodge is kind of nice, but the crit isn't. Demonic Pack just looks all round really weak. Like 13 spell power is likely going to be just... It's not going to change anything. Um, so it's, your choice is basically one of these two. And I just think one less global every corruption is not that valuable on a rune. So having Incinerate where you can eat kicks with it. Especially if you've got meta, right? It's going to be really nice because you can, if you get the incinerate off, you can start pumping out some searing pains for that extra damage, and it's actually going to be pretty valuable. Uh, and then if they do kick it, you can cast fear. So yeah, overall, I think affliction not not too bad, but uh, not quite not quite in the S tier with Destro. Then next up, we got Holy Pala, whose spec I haven't even done. Uh, that's how much of a fuck I give about Holy Palas. But TLDR, Flash of Light, very cheap, but not a lot of healing. Holy Light, expensive, more healing. Most likely going to run Beacon, uh, and then either the Auto Dispel Fear, because they don't actually have Dispel, right? Which this is quite good. Uh, or Divine Sack, potentially. Divine Sack looks like it might be Dispellable. In Wrath, it's actually a physical uh, spell. But on here, it says Magic on Wowhead. So it, it's, it might be dispellable, this. We're not sure yet. And then chest is going to be Horn of Lord Daron. Just uh, just a cheeky buff. You could potentially run Martyrdom to try and break CC as well. I think the rest aren't that valuable. Maybe this for tankiness could be good too. Um, but yeah, I think just Holy Palas aren't going to put out as much healing as Priests are. And they don't have to spell. So 
a little bit weaker, I would say, on that front. And especially if the burst is higher, then they're not going to be as as godly in terms of mana anymore either. Uh, but they do have freedom and bop, so they're in A tier. We've also got Ret. Ret in A tier as well. And the Ret spec has a little bit of wiggle room, I would say. But uh, generally, I think you're going to want to run Divine Storm. Avenger Shield doesn't look like it needs a shield. So this is actually super nice range slow for Rets. Uh, it's also a daze. So this might actually work through FAP. Ret Pala looking like they have a lot of damage overall. Their main Achilles heel is just going to be lack of... Uh, lack of, of uh, uptime. It's going to be quite easy to kite them, I think. So that's why I put them in A tier. But I feel like they are absolutely going to be able to cause a lot of pressure in a, in a Hodge. Especially if it's on like a priest or something. It's going to be scary. Next we've got Combat Rogue. And out of all the Rogue specs, this one looks the most... Um... It looks the most nice in terms of the each talent actually having good value. And I think this is going to be the most solid in terms of like... In a good player's hands. In, in, like long term. It's not like a, it's not like sub where you kind of just want to try and cheese one shot someone down with your CDs. This is going to actually be able to do stuff longer term. Uh, so we start out with improved gouge, and then we have improved sinister strike to get the five in the top row that actually affects shiv. Then we've got imp backstab, just for some nice backstab backstab crit, precision to get uh, hit cap, and then endurance for sprint and evasion CDs, and then improved sprint. Because I think the main main thing that's going to hurt rogues here is the again they they're, they're going to have a hard time staying on their target. There's going to be a lot of random slows and roots and stuns and whatnot, and they're likely to get kited. So this is what they want to try and avoid. They want just they just want uptime. That's it. Um, and then runes, we've kind of put the runes with that in mind. Quick draw, range slow. So. Going to make it possible to, to reconnect because of it. Between the Eyes is going to be their only stun, actually. And this is why I put them in at A tier and not S tier. I think if they had Cheap and Kidney, then they would be in S tier. But they don't. They only have this. So you kind of got to take it. Uh, and you can also potentially reconnect with it as well. And then Shiv to uh, to get those poisons up. I think is a solid pick. You also have Shadow Strike. But I think that the fact that this is only usable in stealth is... Makes it kind of awkward because if you're in stealth, you're probably getting back to your target anyway. So you basically can only use it with Vanish to, to reconnect. Yeah, I think that was pretty much everything I wanted to say. A rogue. Next. Ah, this one's interesting. Enhanced Shaman. I never thought I'd say that about Enhanced Shaman, but this spec actually looks really interesting. So it's basically... We've actually got one point left. What did I forget a point in? Oh, it was, it was the, the reduced damage taken one, wasn't it? I think that's fine. There's actually a point up for grabs here. I don't know where to put it. We'll put it in this for now. Reduce mana cost. That's fine. But I actually don't think your mana is going to be an issue. So this is like a, a very tanky enhanced spec. That you play one-hander and shield. And you play with rock bite a weapon. So you get way of earth value. Which is 10% reduced damage. 30% increased health. 6% reduced chance to be crit. And your Earth Shock uh, no longer shares cooldown with your other shock, so you can use both Earth Shock and like Frost Shock or whatever uh, without them sharing cooldown with each other. The only downside is your Earth Shock is now melee only, so it's going to be a lot lot harder to interrupt people from range. Um, we were looking into it, and you can't just click off Rock Biter and then shock someone, so it's going to be like a global before you can shock. So that's the main downside. But it also has shield mastery, so this is actually 8% mana now every time you block. And with the shield specialization, you're going to block a hell of a lot. This is going to make them really tanky. And, and I've heard on the Grapevine that while in Ghost Wolf form, which now also reduces your damage taken by 10% and is usable indoors, uh, you can also just block in Ghost Wolf form, which makes this really insane for flag carrying. Um... So you basically, you're probably going to see some some enhanced flag carriers, but I think you can just 
be really annoying just running at people with this spec as well. And then you can also do stuff from range with the Lava Burst. Not that many options on this rune, but the Lava Burst actually provides quite a nice, like, side, you know, option if you are getting kited. But yeah, the Quick Ghost Wolf is really strong as well. So yeah, really, really cool spec. Uh... I would say this is probably stronger than the regular enhanced spec, honestly. I would put the regular enhanced in, in B. But this this spec looks so cool, I had to put it in A. Next up, we got Feral. Feral is, uh, is a tricky one. Because it's going to be very much about how much damage they're able to do. It's the, it's it's they're, they're, Their mechanics are kind of awkward. I feel like they're going to be a little bit energy starved. And also, Skullbash now shares cooldown with Feral Charge. But also... You can't really get the good stuff here and Furrow. If you want Feral Charge, then you have to kind of give up like everything else to get Furrow. Or, you know, you call it a day. And there's no travel form, so you have to, you have to take Feline Swiftness if you want, that, you know, that good mobility. But arguably, you could drop everything else and 5 in Furrow and then drop Skull Bash and take Savage Raw. That is something that could be possible. Don't know if Savage Roar is even going to be that that good because again, I feel like a lot of the energy talents for Feral aren't able to you aren't able to get them yet. Uh, things like Improved Shred, right? I think it's going to come down a lot to just overall Feral damage. Mangle obviously being insanely nice uh, and thirty percent more damage for both bleeds uh, and Shred is is nuts. So I think Ferals are going to be bursty, but I think they might be more scary at forty when they can kind of get more of the things that they need. They're kind of missing a few talents at this level. So that's why I put them in A. They might end up being lower, they might end up being higher. It's it's again this is very this is all theory crafting right now. So keep in mind that the, the tier list will almost certainly change a bunch. I'll do another one after SOD comes out and we get a bit of experience and, and feel like the measure a bit. It's very hard to to just eyeball everything and be like, yeah that's exactly how it's gonna be, you know. It's too complicated. But we give it our best shot. Uh, next is MM. MM is decent. Again, it's going to come down to how well they're able to stay at range. If MM can stay at range, I think they're even better than survival. They don't need all the melee stuff, right? They can stay at range. Their range damage is going to be insanely high. But if you get to them, then they are going to be in a lot of trouble. Uh, again, this is going to be Lion. And then you, they can choose again between Chimera and uh, Explosive. But yeah, they have aimed, they have good crit, they have range, they have slow on uh, stun on concussive, and then a bit more dam here. It's just quite a basic, basic spec, just raw damage at range. Anything where they can keep range, they're going to absolutely plow for everything. Um, so yeah, definitely one to watch. Right, Arcane Mage is going to be regen. Now there's, there's kind of two spec options for this, but I put it under Arcane because we've already got Fire and Frost, right? But this is basically regeneration mage right and this is very much going to come out down to how much the heals actually do and how the mana is going to be because i actually am worried about their mana um and the fact you can like rewind tr time is such a a great pick but then it means you can't have arcane blast so it means you're going to be spamming either missiles or aoe and if you're aoe -ing, you're going to go in really fast but this also lends itself to being almost like a flag carrier mage then, right? You would change the spec slightly and it would be potentially something like this. Right? And you'd just be super annoying. Um, blinking around all the time, keeping the hot on yourself, using AE if there's a lot of people to give loads of healing to yourself. Novering people, like frostbiting people. Blinking away, rewinding time if you get low, you've got cold snap. It's just a super annoying flag carrier to try and stick on for, for anyone, really. Um, so they're the kind of the two options for regen. But yeah, if you just want to be a, a straight, straight up healer, I would say that this is potentially a better, better spec. Just because you're going to have a little bit more mana. Um, and then you can just chain missiles on people to heal. Uh, and then if, if shit gets wild, you've got the improved arcane explosion potentially as well. Um, but yeah, due to the unknown aspects of this spec, that's why I put it down in B. It might be higher. Um, 
it's it's hard to say at the moment. Next up is Warrior. This will be Arms Warrior. Arms Warrior is the specs fairly nice. Um, you got the parry and then attack mastery, so you can do some nice defensive stance switches, disarms, things like that. Uh, you got improved charge, which is good with Warbringer. So you can charge around, you can intercept around. You'll have a decent amount of rage because of that. And then obviously overpower for that extra damage when you can. And then some crit. Now, it all depends on how much rage they're actually going to have. Because if the rage is really good, you probably can just run quick strike, right? As a rage dump. And if you run quick strike, then you want to run three points and improved heroic strikes. The spec will change slightly. Um... But if the if the rage is really bad, then you'll need endless rage, and you're just going to be just struggling around all over the place. But I think if you can run the the quick strike build, you might just be up in A tier. So it, it, yeah, it remains to be seen. Uh, but the 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 tools are definitely there for warrior. They just you know how warriors are. They ramp up a lot with damage. So if they can do do damage, then they can do a lot of damage due to the 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 nature of rage. Uh, next is Asa Rogue. Don't know how I feel about this one. I think it's going to absolutely destroy plate. But it's also going to be kited a lot. You don't have imp sprint. And it's kind of just a damage bot. You've got opportunity for backstab. Uh, backstab damage and then obviously improve backstab. And then they buff mutilate. And then I've got between the eyes instead of envenom to actually have a stun. But you could even just be a complete bot and go envenom as well. Arguably. Um, I think between the eyes might actually be better just because you have like a little bit more lockdown and mutilate might just be enough damage You can also mutilate you don't need daggers now for mutilate is another thing to note so That frees it up a little bit more as well, but yeah, I put this in uh, B tier I think it's gonna be overall not as valuable as combat combat is gonna be m more worth in more situations, but You know, especially if you can just swap runes being able to swap to you just mutilate and deadly brew is going to be you know get, getting a restealth and swapping to that just to kill a, a, a tanky flag carrier or something is going to be having big potential it depends if you can do it in bgs or not we'll have to wait and see for that one uh next up is balance balance actually looks quite interesting and there were two potential specs one way you go in six swarm and one way you just chuck everything in balance and buff the existing stuff Problem with Insect Swarm is the damage is really low and you don't get another rank of it. So it's not really worth spending all your points to get it. So we've, we've decided to go for the Wrath cast time. Nature's Grasp, Imp, uh, imp Roots so you don't get any pushback. Then you got the Moonfire and Sunfire crit. And then uh, Nature's Reach for just extra reach on everything basically. Extra energy on everything. And then Fury of the Storm Rage. This is the biggest thing. It makes your Wrath free. And it also has a... It, when you're Wrathing it gives your Healing Touch a chance to be instant. So I think balanced druids might even just be better healers than the rest of druids, honestly. Like the the life bloom and the rest uh, and the rejuve healing look really low and expensive, and I just don't think they're going to deal with the burst that well. Whereas sort of balance is going to be able to like off heal almost a little bit, which is going to be cool. Um, arguably put could put life bloom here, but again it's quite expensive. Uh, Star surge looks looks all right. Decent instant damage. Um, and benefits from some of your talents as well here. Uh, and then obviously Sunfire is just another dot. Good damage on it. So I think Moonk is going to have decent spread spread pressure. As long as they don't just do... Uh, could potentially be up in A tier as well. Is, I think Moonk and Ellie both have the potential to be up in A tier. Depends on how their damage feels. If they have enough damage, then they'll be in A tier. Uh, next is BM. And BM is still a hunter, right? Hunters, we know, are banger. The damage is going to be crazy with all the twink gear. Uh, depends on how how Blizzard decide to tweak pets. If the pets are nutty, then the spec is going to be really strong. At the moment, I've got it one tier below MM. I think it's just better in fewer situations than MM. And same for survival. It's going to be really strong in duels, but if, if it's anywhere out in the world or in BGs, then the pet cheese damage is not going to be as potent because of you know there's going to be extra healers or peels or whatever it's going to get stuck in slows and roots um and you won't have men pet or in men pet 
Arguably, you could take one point in it with the 15%. You drop a little bit of damage. I'll take that. That's not too bad. Again, Master Marksman is going to be Lion. And that will give your pet more HP as well. Your pet should be decently tanky because of Endurance Training, uh, Lion, Beast Mastery. Um, so it shouldn't just die instantly, but you've got the Imprev Improvive just in case. But yeah, I think BM's, BM's definitely not going to be bad, but I think the other Hunter Specs are going to be better all-rounders. Uh, and then, as I said before, we've got Ellie. Similar build to the Enhanced Tank. But you're going to be more focused on like staying back, looking to do damage. You've got the Sham Rage. Shield Master is nice for mana, but uh, you can also potentially go for Overload if you're not getting targeted that much and you feel like, yeah, you can stand back and turret. Overload is going to be very nice with Lava Burst. And you just basically got all the damage and mana stuff over here. Uh, one issue with going Overload and Lava Burst is obviously you're not going to be able to take Water Shield or Shield Mastery. And this is where you can get a lot of mana back from. But you have the Sham Rage to cover that a little bit if you do get targeted. Uh, or you can just drink. Again, Ellie going to come down to how much damage or how much pressure they can actually dish out with their damage, whether or not it's actually a threat with the Lava Burst. It looks like it's going to be pretty pumpy, but it's, it's again, it's hard to say ahead of time. Uh, and then the last one here is a Rogue, Sub Rogue. And again, this is kind of a cheese spec where you can play Slaughter from the Shadows. Right, you can play Shadow Strike. I'd say Shadow Strike is almost potentially better, even, um, than Shiv, but both are okay. But basically, you just got improved ambush, extra damage on backstab, uh, and then some utility stuff. Um, and yeah, you're just looking to one-shot people with this one, basically, due to the reduced an uh, energy cost on your backstab and uh, ambush. The main reason I don't like the Shadow Strike unless you have to use it is obviously you lose that ambush and you're talented for it. So you're quite committed to, you know, getting those nice ambush crits and you're going to lose that with the Shadow Strike. I don't think the talent buffs it. Um, but yeah, you'll definitely see some sub rogues one-shotting like priests and mages and warlocks probably. It's 100% going to happen. It's just a little bit cheesy. So in good, good Warson Gulch 10v10s, I would expect to see more of combat and potentially asa respec to take down flag carriers stuff like that uh c tier we have prot warrior prot warrior just looks kind of memeish honestly you have devastate so you're going to be running one hander and shield and you're just going to be going around sundering people for damage um, and the damage is probably going to be okay. You still got Warbringer, right, to, to for your mobility. But the, I just don't think it's going to be enough to cause problems. And you're more just going to be an annoyance. But you just don't have those stuns like you do in, like, Wrath, Prot Warrior, right? You've got, like, a couple of charges and that's it. You don't have Concussive or anything like that yet. Uh, Leg Rune is going to be either Consumed by Rage or Furious Thunder because you're running a one-hander, right? Either one are kind of... A bit moncast honestly just the furious thunder is like a thunderclap in in death stance because you're gonna be in death stance death stance for death state but you're also unlikely to get a 80 rage that often maybe if you're getting targeted but overall it's gonna be a bit rough and then warbringer is the chest rune to uh to try and keep up time you got some stun resist some yeah, stun resist you got blood rage uh you got last stand or in blood rage rather Last stand to be, you know, even more tanky and then some crit. But I just can't see the, the spec being that good compared to some other stuff. So that's why I've got it down in C. Uh, with Rested Druid. Rested Druid is, I think, going to be decent at higher levels. But at, at this level, Bloom Healing looks relatively low compared to some of the other damage abilities that we've actually seen. So I don't know if they're going to buff the healing on it or what. But we know that Bloom has a really good coefficient. So when Druids start being able to get some bonus healing at higher levels, this is going to start trucking and being super annoying. I just think at this level, it's not going to do enough healing. And it's apparently quite expensive. So Rejuve, Life Bloom, both expensive, both not healing that much. So they're going to have a hard time dealing with, uh, with all the pressure coming out, I think. And additionally, it's a pain in the ass for them to even get Feral Charge. Uh, you know, they've maybe... Maybe you have to just drop this and this to, to get it. I mean, it's just so awkward, right? You lose your nature's grasp then. 
maybe you can feral charge on cooldown then maybe the specs decent actually for uh for resto either way it's it's not a nice spec they can't go into resto really early on other than going for like re regrowth and an imp healing touch and this is uh it's not ideal so yeah resto Ridge is kind of uh in an awkward spot and i put it in in c tier as a result maybe they buff buff the hell out of Blyplume and it's just set, gonna gonna solo carry them which would be really annoying but yeah then it would probably be a few tiers higher we'll see uh, and then last is Shadow Priest and the reason Shadow Priest is kind of bad is because you have to over 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 cap your hit otherwise you can't get further down in the tree Imp Fear is nice but you don't really fear that much on cooldown in in most settings but it is okay uh, but Mind Flayer damage is quite low at this level and it's only 20 yard range which is really awkward to use so the spec overall isn't that strong the disc spec and talents are a lot stronger but the main issue with shadow is that pain is level 18 so your pain is going to be doing like i think over 100 damage less than the next rank up that you would get at 26 uh so shared pain loses a lot of value as a result of this so you're almost just going to be like the guy that's fishing for rank one pain blackout procs um you know in in the battle while well, not really doing that much maybe you put up one big pain and a void plague and just like try and try and zerg it down with like mind blast mind flay death or something but it's like you could just go for a smite build and and potentially do more more damage than that you know so it's just in a really awkward spot it's like this limbo level because before you get to level 40 once you get to 40 shadow is going to be insane but you're kind of just eating up a, a group slot for something that's just like subpar and you might as well just take a disc to do everything you can do but better basically um you know have more mana more survivability uh you can still fish for blackouts if you want you can still use void plague if you want um but then you can also have the option to like penance palm be just 10 times more useful so i almost didn't even include shadow at all because i just think disc is that much better uh, the stuff in F tier is stuff that I just consider to be like no one's going to go this because there's not enough talents to be spec defining yet. And the stuff that is there is just bad. Um, Holy, again, you could potentially go for a Smite Priest, but it's just, it doesn't play out that much differently to Disc. You get like half second off Smite. Everything else from Disc is better. Um, so can't see many people rolling Holy over Disc. Same with Prot, it's kind of just like you can use you can use the, the Avengers Shield without a shield as Rhett. You do more damage as Rhett. You're not that tanky as Prot. Um, and you just lose a bunch of damage. So yeah, you might see some Prots, but I don't think they're going to be that strong. Um, I'm, I'm reluctant to put them on the tier list, really. And then Demo, again, it's just a bunch of pet talents. You can't get the, the talent after Feldom, so it's still, even when you Feldom, like a four and a half second cast or something ridiculous. So it's just completely useless. Um, and it's there's nothing that really plays out any differently to the specs that are already on there. So I've just left these ones out. Oh yeah, I was going to do Resto Shaman, wasn't I? Resto Sham was like... Uh... I think Resto Sham wants heal mastery, a shield mastery. Like that just makes sense, right? And then you go Earth Shield. And then it's like... Well, Okay, and then you go Water Shield, and then you're literally, like, this un fucking god class. Like, I don't know. This is the thing, right? Like, now what? Probably Shield Spec, Ghost Wolf. You've got four points left. Like, you could arguably just take Lava Burst as a Resto Shaman, man. Like, I actually don't think you need Water Shield if you have Shield Mastery. Like, if anyone touches you, you're getting so much mana. Um, so, yeah, that's it. That's that's the tier list. Time to let me know if you have any gripes with it, chat.